Hi, everybody. It's Amanda and Janelle, and we're here again with another Frequently Asked Questions Friday, Friday Facts. Uh, this will be volume four. So let's take a look at our presentation, and we can see what we will be talking about today. All right. Uh, so today we will talk about the following questions. We'll talk about what is an incubation period and why must you wait 14 days following contact with a known case of COVID-19? What is the difference between a quarantine period and an incubation period? What are some tips for safe holiday celebrations? And then as a special bonus, we will go over uh, what an mRNA vaccine is by using the analogy of pie. Okay, so the first thing we're going to cover is what is an incubation period. I just want to show this infograph and then we're going to talk about it a little more and I'll pop up again for you guys to understand. So the incubation period is a period of time between when you're exposed to an infection when you begin to show symptoms. It's the amount of time that it takes for the virus to replicate in your body before you begin to show signs of an infection and can infect another person. An incubation period varies from one infection to another and from one person to another. So it is very individualized, case by case. The incubation period for COVID-19 infections is anywhere between 2 to 14 days. Um, it's important to understand that after an exposure to a positive case, even if you're feeling well on day five and receive a negative test, you may still be in your incubation period and you can still develop symptoms up until day 14. So that's why we suggest that people wait the full 14 days before returning to work and school for the quarantine. Okay, what is the difference between the incubation period and the quarantine period? The quarantine period refers to the total amount of time that you should isolate following exposure to a known case of COVID-19 or if you were positive yourself. As we have previously discussed on volume two of Frequently Asked Questions Friday, quarantine and isolation periods vary depending on when, where, and how you are exposed to a positive case, as well as if you can isolate away from other people and if you have symptoms. You might only be asked to self-quarantine for 14 days following exposure to a known case of COVID-19, in which case your possible incubation period will line up with your quarantine period. Those 14 days are only referred to an incubation period if you do end up developing an infection as a result of your exposure. So this is the important part that I want everyone to take away from the incubation period. So if you do develop a case of COVID-19 following an exposure, you are only considered to be infectious to others 48 hours after your symptoms begin. So here's this diagram again, and we're going to go into a little bit more detail. So the infection is when you were exposed to COVID-19. So you have the incubation period. And it's important to note that the infectious period isn't the entire length of the incubation period. So I get a lot of questions on if someone has an exposure to a positive COVID-19 case and then worked that day and didn't find out if they came home. Do we have to notify the people that they worked with that day? So we don't because that's still the incubation period. The viral load hasn't increased enough in your body for you to be shedding the virus to other people and to have other people be infected. So that's the main takeaway of this slide. Okay, so now we're gonna transition to talking about how we can safely celebrate the holidays this year. Uh, we have a couple of um, information sheets from the CDC that we will be sharing and sending out with this presentation um, that are specific to Thanksgiving, but a lot of what we will be talking about can be applied to other holiday celebrations as well. So the first thing that public health officials are recommending is to consider creative ways of connecting virtually with those who are outside of your household. Um, they consider that every time that your household comes in contact with another household, there is increased risk and there's increased chance of community spread, especially now as we're spending so much time indoors because it's cold outside. Um, we are also going to include on this one um, a link to the Greater Boston Food Bank uh, because if you're connecting with people virtually, you can remember you can also give virtually and generosity is something that helps us all to feel connected. 
Um, but the CDC does recommend things like um, having a video call with extended members of your family, especially with grandparents, um, great grandparents, or people who are immunocompromised and otherwise at risk from this virus. Um, the second thing that public health officials are recommending is to consider simple ways that you and people at your gathering can work together to keep each other safe. So they share ideas like um, if you're having a big meal, try to eat outdoors. If you're eating inside or spending time inside, open windows. If you're having a big meal, have one person make food and have them wear a mask while they are cooking. Make sure everybody at your gathering is hand washing. Uh, limit the number of guests and limit time spent together. Remember, number of guests and increased time spent together is equal to an increased risk. And if there's one person at the gathering who ends up testing positive afterwards, the amount of time that you are with them could increase the risk that you have of contracting a more severe infection because you would be exposed to greater amounts of the virus. Um, consider having everybody in your gathering wear masks, especially while you're indoors. Uh, we understand that that's not possible while people are eating. Consider that while you are sitting at a table, um, you can space everybody out. Everybody doesn't have to sit right next to each other. You can especially consider that people from the same family unit could be seated together at one side with several spaces between them and the next family unit. So one household is seated at one side of a long table with two or three spaces between and more people at the end. Um, so these were some of the most helpful tips that we found from these graphics. And again, we'll be sharing these when we send out this presentation. And we also just wanted to remind staff that the state of Massachusetts is still operating under a travel order. So that applies for anyone entering Massachusetts from a higher risk state or for those who have traveled outside of the state and are returning from a higher risk state. So we do recommend that everyone take a look at the travel order if they're traveling outside of Massachusetts. And we ask that you please be aware that recreational travel around the holidays may affect your ability to come to work. And we ask you to try to plan accordingly with that. Okay, so here are some of the resources that we use while we are creating this presentation. Um, so feel free, we will be sending out a copy of these slides. Feel free to look further at some of the things that we have mentioned. Um, this is the end of a lot of the questions that we've had that apply to our staff. However, we have exciting vaccine research. Yay. And so we thought we would take this moment to share um, some of the ways that we've come to understand these breakthroughs in vaccine technology by using the analogy of pie. Uh, so this analogy was found from a vaccine researcher who's in Georgia. Her name is Laurel Bristow, and she works at a vaccine um, Center with Emory University. Um, so let's talk really briefly about um, the virus that causes COVID-19, which is SARS-CoV-2. This um, virus is an RNA replicating virus. Other RNA replicating viruses that we are more familiar with are seasonal influenza, H1N1, also called swine flu, hepatitis C, the common cold, and polio. So here's a helpful analogy for understanding how an RNA replicating virus works which will then help us to understand how an mRNA vaccine works in our body. So let's say that you're spending the weekend at home and on a Saturday morning, a beautiful pie shows up on your doorstep. You see the pie, you see the lovely design on the crust and you say, come into my house, you beautiful pie. And then you bring it inside. In this analogy, the pie is an RNA replicating virus and your home is the inside of one of your cells. Once you get the pie inside, you start to follow a recipe and make more pies like the one that showed up on your doorstep. You use the ingredients in your own kitchen and you make pie after pie after pie. You're now making more pies, viruses, by following the recipe, the RNA. But in the meantime, the pies are starting to destroy your kitchen and your house. You cannot stop the pies that are coming out of the oven because you're already fighting off the pies that are trashing your home. You try to call for help to your neighbors, your immune response, but all of the neighbors are also fighting off quickly replicating pies as well, and your neighborhood becomes overwhelmed. Okay, so the pie equals an RNA replicating virus. Your apartment is your body cell. And the point is that an RNA replicating virus enters your cells and uses your own cells replicating process, your kitchen, to make copies of itself by following the RNA recipe before your body can recognize what is happening and shut the virus down. Both of the recent, recent vaccines that we've heard about in the news, the vaccines developed by Moderna and Pfizer are mRNA vaccines, which is a new kind of vaccine developed to fight RNA replicating viruses. 
An mRNA vaccine works by sending your cells the shell of a virus, which is also called a spike protein. The term mRNA refers to a specific protein code or recipe. Following our pie analogy, the mRNA vaccine would function this way. Instead of a whole pie with a filling showing up on your doorstep, a beautiful crust arrives. You, your body cell, bring the pretty crusts into your kitchen and follow the recipe to make more empty crusts, making more spike protein. Because the crust is empty, it cannot destroy your house. When you bring all of your new pie crusts to show your neighbors, they look at it and they say, ah, why would I just want to eat pie crust? And then they smash it. When your neighbors smash the pie crust, your body's immune system saves the memory of the gross pie crust. And then the next time the whole pie shows up on your doorstep, all of your cells recognize a bad pie crust and smash the whole pie instead of letting it inside of the house. Because the pie crust is actually a very fragile spike protein, it must be transported at very cold temperatures in order to maintain its structure. This is why you are hearing about some of the challenges that will be faced if they are using these two vaccinations, Moderna and Pfizer, for vaccinating the public at large. In other cases of RNA replicating viruses, like with the seasonal flu, hepatitis C, or polio, we've used inactivated viruses to save the memory of the virus into our cells and help them recognize those viruses in the future. Inactivated viruses are whole viruses that have been damaged. They are a pie with the filling inside, but the filling is burned, and therefore the pies cannot wreck your house, your cells. When you replicate this pie and bring it to your neighbors, your neighbors say, this pie tastes gross, and then they smash it. After they smash the pie, they save a memory of it within their proteins, and when the additional pies show up with the same crust, they remember it's a gross pie, and they do not let it into their house. These are whole pies. They are not as fragile as the empty crust. Because these kinds of vaccinations are more stable, they do not have to be transported at very cold temperatures. So in conclusion, we love pie, especially around Thanksgiving. We don't love viruses that hijack our cells to build more viruses using RNA. Spike proteins are very cool, but very hard to keep stable. And vaccine research is fascinating. Great, thank you. All right, you guys. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for listening to the things that we share. Please keep sending us questions. We love having a chance to connect with you guys. Bye.